program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, today we're coming down the home stretch of our radio season. So, before starting our final show, let's go out to Jack Benny's house where Jack is uh, taking another violin lesson from his famous French music teacher, Professor LeBlanc. But before we go, let me ask you a question. Can it be the trees that fill the breeze with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no, it isn't the trees. It's... No, no, Mr. Benny, no. I keep telling you, not that way. Try it again. Yes, sir. Let's see, can it be the tree that fills the breeze with rare and magic perfume? I don't know, but I smell something. <laughs> what? Something, please. But, Professor, I've done so many exercises, I'd rather play something like souvenir. Very well, very well. Play it, play it, anything. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I ought to get my other violin. If you've got strings on it, yeah, never mind. <laughs> okay, shall I try souvenir again? Maybe later, but right now, let us get back to the exercises. And this time, I will count for you. Uh, yes, sir. It's one and two and three and four. And... Watch the notes that you are striking, bend your thumb, you're not hitchhiking. <laughs> Maybe not a little thinner, I don't want to lose my dinner. <laughs> I am sorry I left Paris, you are even worse than Harris. <laughs> mm, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny, how long have you been playing the violin? Oh, I play the violin since, well, since I was a little baby. A little baby. Yeah, in fact, if you look closely on my violin, you can see my teeth marked. And so, Benny, after hearing you play, those could be anybody's. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm paying you to teach me, not to insult me. If I'm not playing so well today, maybe it's because my fingernails are too long. Long fingernails have nothing to do with it. Well, your fingernails are short. They were long when I came in here. <laughs> Putting them on the rock. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Maybe I can spend it a little longer. It's been more minutes than less than she is through. Finish. That's right. Then you will give me the other half of that five dollar bill. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Now, if you don't mind, I'll go back to Sylvan here. I wouldn't care if you went back to Waukegan. <laughs> what? It's no use. Goodbye, Mr. Benin. But, Professor, I am going back to the cash bar. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm. What a sentimental fellow he is. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Hmm, he must have gone out, and I told him I wanted him to drive me to the studio. Oh, well, I'll call Mary. She'll drive me over. <laughs> Mary, not so fast. Oh, Jack, why is it every time I draw you're so jittery? I can't help it. I'm as nervous as a cat. Well, stop arching your back and sit down. 
don't drive so fast. Well, if you don't like the way I drive, why don't you take a taxi cab? You know very well why. The last time we rode in a cab, we had that horrible accident. Oh, yes. The cab hit a bump and the meter jumped a dollar and a half. <laughs> I don't mean that time. Besides, my insurance covered it. <laughs> But anyway, as long as I'm riding with you, take it easy. And Jack, next time get Rochester to drive you to the studio. Well, he was supposed to, but he left the house without letting me know. I wonder where he went. He's up to those... Mary, look out! Oh, there you go again. Turn on the radio and relax. Okay. I'll turn on the short way. Maybe I can get some police calls. Calling police cars 17, 21, and 43. Calling cars 17, 21, and 43. Drive your cars to the corner of 4th and Vermont and see Madman Munt. He'll give you the craziest prices. <laughs> hmm, I better try another station. Does Vivian know that her sister Edith is trying to steal her husband? Will Gwendolyn be arrested for putting arsenic in William's cream de mint? <laughs> when will they realize that their innocent-looking boarder, Mr. Winterbottom, is really a Japanese saboteur? And the tramp who's sleeping in their cellar is none other than Robert Dalton of the FBI. <laughs> when will Mother realize that the sticky stuff which is ruining her victory garden is the start of an oil gusher which will make them all millionaires? <laughs> Tune in again this time tomorrow for another chapter of the Johnsons, a typical American family. <laughs> Gosh, now, you know, that's my favorite serial program. Oh, last week you said the same thing about the adventures of Matilda Cronkite, girl horse doctor. <laughs> well, I guess I'm the pickle type. I'll get another statement. Ladies and gentlemen, are you embarrassed by getting five o'clock shadow at 3.30? <laughs> Do you suffer from moist, oily skin? Would you like to have your hide dry? <laughs> Then why not try sympathy too? <laughs> tremendous cab. During our absence, we will be replaced by the Delop Straw Cab program. Delop Straw Cab is spelled backwards, spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, folks, when you purchase our product, you'll be showing your appreciation to me, our sponsor, and our quartet. Gosh, Mary, I'm going to miss them during the summer. I'd like to miss them right now. Why? And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the feature spot on our program where we interview interesting personalities from all walks of life, I bring you the butler of a very famous man. Your name, please. Rochester Van Jones. Jack, did you hear that? Yeah, so that's where he went. Uh, Rochester, I understand that you've been in Mr. Benny's employee for over ten years. Yes, sir. You must be very proud to be working for a man like Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Proud and tired. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's strange. I always thought Mr. Benny was an easy man to work for. Easy? You remember what Mr. Churchill told England about blood, sweat, toil, and tears? Yes. Well, so far I've done everything but bleed. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, Rochester, I'd like to bring up an interesting question. Is Mr. Benny really as cheap in private life as he is on the radio? No, no, he loosens up on the radio. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what makes him like that. Well, Mr. Benny believes that money is the root of all evil, and he's trying to purify the human race. <laughs> well, that's silly. After all, he hasn't got all the money in the world. 
No, but he's got most of it. He knows where the rest of it is. <laughs> Imagine blabbing about my private affairs. Quiet, Jack. This is what every girl should know. Oh, yeah? Now, Rochester, there's one more question I'd like to ask you. There's been a lot of speculation about Mr. Benny's age. Would you tell us how old he really is? Thirty-six. Hmm. It's about time he got to the truth. <laughs> well, how do you know? He's been thirty-six ever since I've known him. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. And there are very few people still living who can contradict him. <laughs> well, I've seen Mr. Benny in person, and it's hard to believe he's only thirty-six. You ought to see him in the morning before I get him assembled. <laughs> Assembled? Yes, sir. Hair, shoulders, muscles, girdles. He goes together like a jigsaw. <laughs> I'll certainly tell him a thing or two when he gets home. Well, Rochester. Hey, our program is on. Very good indeed. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Hey, say, sir, Jack isn't here yet. Uh, what do you think we ought to do? Don't worry, don't you? Don't worry. I can handle this. Give me that microphone. <clears throat> Hi, you folks. This is Phil Harris talking. You know, the downbeat Terry Grant. Hey, Don, when I went to the studio this afternoon, I dropped into the bar, and W.C. Fields was there buying drinks for everybody. W.C. Fields was buying everybody drinks? Yes, that's what I like about the South. Oh, hey, there's so much of the public. You ought to be nice and you. You ought to be right and you, girl. Yes, sir. You know, Don, every day, W.C. Fields drinks a whole quart. Drive your blues away. And now, folks, I want to tell... Okay, kids, okay, I'm here. Sorry, we're late, fellas. Oh, hello, Mary. Hiya, Jackson. Well, it was entirely my fault, fellas. I was taking a violin lesson, and I completely lost track of the time. Well, how do you like that? This is the first time you've ever been late, Jack, and it had to happen on our last program. Our last program? What have we done now? <laughs> Phil, we haven't done anything. Maybe that's why it's our last program. <laughs> Stop being funny. We're only, off, we're only off for the summer, and we'll be back in the fall. Well, this is a fine time to tell us we're going off the air. I just hired a new trefingoist for my band. A new what? Trefingoist, a guy who plays the trefingo. <laughs> Phil, Phil, there's no such instrument as a trefingo. I know, but the union says you've got to have one. <laughs> I, I still say there's no... Oh, say, Jack, I meant to tell you, Larry Adler called up and said he was going to drop in to rehearse those numbers you're going to do with him on your overseas tour. Oh, yes, I'm expecting, Larry. And, kid, listen, when I come back in the fall, I want you to know that we're all going to be together again. For the same sponsor, the same station, at the same time. And, and the, the same, same salary. salary. Yup. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> since this is the... Hey, Mr. Uh, Benny, who's going to take our place this summer? Oh, our summer show is going to be Wayne King and his incomparable music. Wayne King, if they wanted unconquerable music, why didn't they hire my orchestra? <laughs> why didn't they hire your orchestra? You tell them, Mary. Why didn't they hire your orchestra? You tell them, Don. If this ever gets back to me, I'm stuck. <laughs> You're stuck and you've got an extra trefingo player to keep you company. <laughs> Trefingo is. Imagine an instrument of Trefingo. Whoever, only Phil would know about Trefingo. There isn't another musician in the world that would know about a Trefingo. There's no such a thing. Say, and, Jack, uh, uh, I've got a surprise for you. What is it, Mary? You know who else is coming back on the air in the fall? Who? Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Yeah, you'll be on the same day you are and on the same network. Well, I'll be... So Allen finally got a job, huh? <laughs> Who's he going to be with? Standard Brands. I don't mean his jokes. I mean his sponsor. <laughs> Boy, will I fix him in the fall. And now, as I started to say, ladies and gentlemen... Well, Jack, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but since this is our last program, I took the liberty of inviting the mother of a very dear friend of mine to come up here to the studio. Oh, fine, Don. She can sit right over here. Oh, thanks, Jack. But, but first, I'd, uh, she'd like to meet you. This is Mrs. Riggs. This is Jack Benny. Oh, how do you, how do you do, Mrs. Riggs? How do you do, Mr. Benny? Uh, Don tells me you're the mother of a very good friend of his. Yes. You see, my son is in radio, too. Oh, really? What does he do? Uh, he's a tobacco auctioneer. 
Oh, a tobacco auctioneer. Then your son is L.A. Speed Riggs. You know, he's on my program. Oh, no, no, Mr. Benny. You're on his program. <laughs> Uh-huh. Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, Mrs. Riggs, your son... Your son has a very unusual occupation, a tobacco auctioneer. How did he happen to get a job with Lucky Strike? Well, who else would he go with? Speedy knew that Lucky Strikes were made from the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco. Yes, but how did Speedy know that? Oh, he's known that for years. In fact, while other boys were wasting their time playing baseball and football and going with girls, Speedy used to stand out in the tobacco field all day long, holding up that big leaf. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, I've seen those pictures in magazines. <laughs> He's good looking, too. You well, Mrs. Riggs, uh, the leaf, too. I mean, Mrs. Riggs, now that we talk... <laughs> Mr. Rick, now that we've talked about your son, Speedy, uh, before you go, wouldn't you like to say a few words to him? You know, he's listening in New York. Oh, may I? Certainly. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, Speedy. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Rigg, very much. Isn't she a sweet little lady? You know, I'm, uh, I'm glad... You know, he really said something to her then, you know? I'm glad you uh, must ask her how she felt. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you introduced me to her, Don. I knew you'd like her, Jack. Yeah. I wonder what Effie Boone's mother is like. You know? <laughs> and now, folks, since this is our last... Pro Come in. Hello, Jack. Well, Larry Adler. Hello, Larry. Larry, did you bring your harmonica with you so we can rehearse for our trip? Yes, Jack, I did. And I also brought along a new musical instrument, which I just invented. A new musical instrument? Mm-hmm. It's made out of a comb, a piece of tissue paper, and a burned-out electric bulb. 60 watts. <laughs> a comb? A piece 60 watts was that lit. <laughs> now, you know what I hate about when they put in extra words that takes up time and you run over length? You know what I mean? <laughs> Why can't they leave scripts just the way they're written? The <laughs> very good idea. We thought continue. that was funny. We would have written it in. <laughs> a comb, a piece of tissue paper, and a burnt out electric bulb. What do you call an instrument like that? <clears throat> a trefingo. <laughs> oh, so that's a trefingo. Well, look, Larry, how about rehearsing our stuff? I'll grab my violin. We'll go to work. Okay, something oh. Spanish. Wait a minute, Jack. What? Why don't you let Larry play a number first? Something he's going to do alone. All right. Come on, Come on Larry. Come on, 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 Mary, hand me my violin, will you? Okay. You can touch it with your bare hands. You don't have to put on a glove. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, Larry. Let's try a hot tune. Okay. Wait a minute.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the midst of the mighty Smurf War Loan Drive. Every tank, every plane, every gun we send against Japan now will shorten the war and save lives. The United States, that's us, all of us, the nation Lincoln called the last best hope of Earth, has had to arm to the teeth to preserve the freedom we believe belongs to everyone. So buy and hold Seventh War Loan Security. Remember, folks, last Sunday was I Am an American Day. Now, here's your chance to prove that we are. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. The quality of your cigarette depends upon fine tobacco. And Lucky Strike means...